Lord Jesus, I'm ready to listen to your Holy Spirit. I'm ready to listen what you're going to say to me. Lord Jesus, I am in need of your word. I don't need a nice sermon tonight. I don't need religion. I need your voice. I need to hear your voice speaking directly to me. In Jesus' name, I will embrace your word. I will make it my own. And I will delight in your word. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Say to God to taste and see that the Lord is good. Again, to the person on the other side, say, hey, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Do you treasure dirty dishwash water? Do you keep, keep it for a later stage to wash your dishes again? You put it in bottles and put it in the fridge? What do you do with dirty dishwash water? You throw it away. It's worthless. I mean. So many times the devil come to you, he give you a bad dream. Let me tell you tonight, not every dream that Christian dreams is of God. Pastor, I give myself to Jesus. How can this be? Listen to the parable of Jesus. There was a farmer. He sown good seed in, the, in his field. Then together with the good crops came up weeds. His workers ran, ran to him where the weeds came up and said, Sir, did you not sow good seed? What is coming? What, what, what is arising here? He said, don't worry. An enemy came by night. Said to God next to an enemy came by night and sown evil seed. An even friend in your heart. Your heart is the Lord's field. Even in your heart, he can sow in deception. He can even use the Bible as, he's de as he did with Jesus. He can use the Bible against you even. Now the Bible tells us, friends, do not believe every spirit. Every spirit. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God or not. When you had a dream, you need to discern the dream. When God gives you a dream, it will be completely, totally correct, biblically correct, biblically sound. If there's anything in it that is not in line with God's word, you throw it away. You say, Pastor, can, can't, I, can't I keep the truth in it and throw the rest away? No. If a word comes to you in a dream, for example, you do not, if, if there's anything in it that's not lining up with God's word, that means it's the enemy trying to deceive you, throw it away. Immediately in Jesus' name. It is easy to discern what is of God and not of God. Just read your Bible. I mean, God's word is, the Bible is God's word unto us, a, a prophetic utterance from heaven, the greatest ever, and we know the power of, of prophetic words. I cannot begin to tell you the power of prophetic utterance. I don't speak about divination. I don't speak about tell you about what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't speak about that. I don't, I'm not interested in that. Prophetic utterance carry divine power to change your life from an ungodly cause to a godly cause. The a pro true prophetic utterance cast out demons and heal the sick without even laying a person's hand on the sick. Just God's word coming to your ears can heal the sick. Changing your life from an ungodly cause to a godly cause. Say divine power to change my life from an ungodly cause to a godly cause. I mean, when a person moves in the prophetic and he, he presents you God's word, because the greatest prophecy ever presented to mankind is your Bible, God's word unto you. Say, my Bible is God's word unto me. But you need to make sure when God's word is presented to you, it must be done in the spirit. If it's done in any other spirit but the Holy Spirit, it's the spirit of deception. Today there's many cults, there's many movements that stand in Jesus' name and proclaim the Bible. But they're not presented to you. They are twisted. They come to you in a twisted form. They're presented to you not in the Holy Spirit but some other spirit. How do you test the spirit? It must line 100% up with God's word. And for the Christian, there's no place for your own viewpoint. This is the thing that Christians struggle a lot with. But pastor, I see it like that. 
You know, I don't care how you see it, and I really don't care what, how the way I see it. The way I see it, I throw away as dirty dishwash water. I've got no viewpoint of my own. I believe God's word only. Amen. But pastor, do you not have a viewpoint of God's word? No, I've got the spirit. I don't want my own viewpoint because my own viewpoint had caused me a lot of trouble in the past. Not recently, many years ago. Throw away your own opinions, your own viewpoints, like dirty dishwash water. It means nothing. And embrace God's word, even sometimes to your own pain. Because sometimes God's word is a two-edged sword. It cut, divide between spirit and soul, marrow and bone. When God speaks to you, he does not compromise. He comes with the truth, and the truth sometimes cut deep, separating between the lie and the truth, between spirit and soul, marrow and bone. Amen? You need the Holy Spirit. Give the Holy Spirit a hand. A Christian without the Holy Spirit is a dead religious dude, like my children will say. I told you, it's like a diesel bucky without a turbo trying to get from Durban with a heavy trailer. You need a lot of patience to get here. How do you know, Pastor? Because once I came up from Durban with a heavy loaded trailer, with a 250 diesel bucky without a tur turbo, it was a nightmare. You know Van Rien and Pass. Say to the guy next to the Christian without the Holy Spirit is worse than a diesel bucky without a turbo. The Christian who says I'm a Christian do not have the Holy Spirit actively in his life is a mere religious person. There's a big difference between religion and true Christians, meaning true Christians, disciples of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say to God, to watch and pray that you don't fall into temptation. Now, everyone gets tempted. I was tempted today. I was tempted yesterday. I was tempted the last three weeks severely. So temptation come to all, but I did not fall into the temptation. I did not give in to it. I did not give it a second thought. I rejected it as dirty dishwash water. That's what you do with temptation. It's worthless nonsense that the devil tried to sell you that looks very similar to your previous life before you became a born-again Christian. Hallelujah. There's a scripture that meant a lot in my life from the day I gave my heart to Jesus when I got born again um, at age 26. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old things have passed away. Everything became new. From the time that I got born again, I uh, gave my heart fully to Jesus, age 26, August that year, my birthday is in February, 26, I tell you, I walked into Jesus, I became a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 was my, more, my motto scripture right from the beginning. Jesus has given it to me, and I still believe it today. If anyone is in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. The old things have passed away. Everything became new. If you see something of your previous life in your life or a temptation is coming your way that look at all similar to your previous life, you reject it and throw it away like dirty dishwash water. And no one keep dirty dishwash water. You don't keep it in a fridge, fridge. You don't keep it to wash your dishes later on again. You throw it away as rubbish. Amen. Say useless nonsense. Amen.